when Dax was about a week old, he had a really hard time eating and was really lethargic. So I think I took him to the doctor four times in the first two weeks of his life. We see the pediatrician in Omaha, which is about an hour away. We took him in and she's like, no, you're right. He just doesn't look right. It was the end of the day. I think it was five o'clock. And so she's like, let's admit you. You live far away. Let's admit you. Let's do a blood test. Let's run everything and see what's going on. About 30 minutes before we're supposed to be released, uh, the doctor came in and, and he said, just in a real grave face, uh, your, your son has HSV meningitis. This is very serious. We don't know if he's gonna make it at this point. We don't know if he does make it, if it, he will have physical or mental handicaps. But we were gonna get you to Children's Hospital as soon as possible. We have this creature that was in the womb for nine months and we've seen him for two weeks and it was, it was gonna be devastating to lose him. Got in the ambulance and he was in a little clear plastic crate. It's, it's, it's normally about a 20 minute drive from Boys Town down to Children's and there was traffic and it, it felt like two hours to me. Um, just a really long, silent ride. They were worried, and we were all worried. You know, we just wanted nothing but the best for Nikki and he. And uh, and it it was a it was tough for all of us to see him going through that. It's just that helpless feeling. To be honest with you, you just you know what can we do to help him? And we didn't know. So it's just there for support, and whether it be a, a quick conversation in the hall, or or just you know a pat on the back or a little hug, just to say hey, we're here. The stay at Children's was hard. When we originally got there, we were in precautions. They didn't know the severity of the disease, and, and they didn't want anybody to bring anything that would further compromise his immune system. Tatum couldn't go in the toy room. Dax couldn't go in the toy room. We were stuck in his room, which is hard for a three-year-old and a baby and a family. We spent a lot of time there just waiting for answers. They said, just watch, just wait and watch. She'll be here for 21 days. We just have to wait and see. You know, we can't tell you what the outcome's gonna be like. We don't know if he'll have any developmental delays or issues, just kind of wait and see. Came back that the meningitis was only in his spinal fluid. So he was clear to have Tatum in the children's room. So we utilized the playroom at Children's Hospital a lot. Playrooms at Children's Hospital and Medical Center are really designed to provide an uh, atmosphere that children are more familiar with. Play and activity is really how children learn about the world, so we want to have a place where they can come in that's familiar to them. Uh, a lot of toys, books, games. So in the, the playroom environment, they can come in, just be a kid, do what kids do, and that's play. The playroom is set up for both patients if they're able to go down there and they're not in isolation, and then also for siblings and, and, and other family members. And so Tatum was allowed to go down to the playroom when she wasn't in our room and play, and she was able to bring toys back, and they had volunteers that would go down with her uh, so that we could stay in the room and talk to the doctors, and it was a really, it was a blessing to have the children's staff there. got the results back and the, the doctor walked in and she said well the results are back and he's clear and it was just it was it was amazing that we were able to go home 21 days doesn't seem like a long time but when you're it's 21 days in a in a children's hospital it's 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 excruciating children's had given us a lot we stayed at Children's all 21 days like it was our home. Ben and I shared the same little couch bed that we slept on and we never, we never left. That was our home. The experience that we had, I mean, we're so grateful for Children's because we've got a happy, normal, developing one and a half year old because of them. About two years ago, our corporate office started talking about 
uh, the concept of leader in life. And I was pretty interested in it at the time, so I decided to put together a leader in life program for some of our people here. The idea of the leader in life program was that we're leaders at work, but we're also leaders at home in our families, we're leaders in the community, we're leaders in our church. And so he had a five-part uh, curriculum that was aimed at um, just helping us realize and helping us grow as leaders, not only at work, but at home, community, etc. This culminated with a project, and the project was um, thinking of a project that would help community, that would help family, that would help spirituality. What'd you find? <gasps> Daxi, can I have lemonade? Milk. Uh-oh. So when Dax's birthday came around, we knew that we really wanted to give back. Here, let's get your brother a tractor. Nikki mentioned that, you know, maybe, maybe we should just do a toy drive for Children's Hospital and, and rather than have our family and friends buy them birthday presents, let's just have them get toys and we'll drop them off as a donation on, on Dax's birthday to the Child Life Specialist. We asked for donations for children's, and we were able to collect a ton of toys, and my mother and father-in-law gave a really generous donation to children's, and we were able to give it to the floor that Dax stayed on. I think Ben's project was a perfect example of being leader in life. He found something that was truly important to him. When his son got sick, it was very quick, and it was very unexpected. And there were so many things going on, you know, in his mind at that time. This was a way for him to give back, to show that he appreciated everything that everybody did for him. We, we have thousands of kids that come through our playrooms and through the hospital on a yearly basis, so our toys get a lot of use. So when we get donations such as Ben and Nikki have provided for us, then we get to replenish toys that are in here, we get to refresh the room. We're very thankful to families like Ben and Nikki who, after they've had experiences here, they want to give back to us. We can't thank this family enough for taking the time to say, hey, we want to give back and we want to make it good for another family that's coming behind us. At the end of each project in our Leader in Life program, we presented them with a little award. This clock is supposed to remind us to take time, time out of our work lives for being a leader in the community, being a leader at home, and then also being a leader at work. We put way too much time in to work, and sometimes we forget about putting time into our families or putting time into our communities. We need to make the time for the things that are important, and that's what makes us good leaders.